Now time for a third test from behind, from our simulated sixth floor window. This shot has to be precise and duplicate the quarter inch hole that matches existing autopsy records. What are we basing this bullet point on historically, Gary? Well, we're, we're basing it on something that the Warren Commission did not have in 1964. The actual autopsy photographs and x-rays of President Kennedy, which were examined officially in the late 1970s. We know that there is a, a bullet entry hole up in this area and an exit hole in the front. And that's what we're trying to test. We have two heads left. One extra in case Mike Yardley misses his shot. If he makes it, one of the mysteries of the Kennedy assassination might be solved. And history will be remade. On a California shooting range, a three-part ballistics experiment nears its climax. In order to duplicate the precise instant of time captured in frame 313 of the Zapruder footage, our team has exactly recreated a forensic moment of history. Our first two tests from the grassy knoll show both debris and damage inconsistent with autopsy and film records. But there is one more location to test. The sniper's perch on the sixth floor of the school book depository. Our sharpshooter, Michael Yardley, sits in the sixth floor window. Chambers a 6.5 millimeter full metal jacket round and prepares to recreate the devastating headshot that killed John Kennedy. Our team attaches the target, again mounted on the rigid crash test dummy neck, freshly injected with simulated brain matter. Our anemometer verifies the fan is delivering a sustained wind of 25 miles per hour, equal to the wind and the speed of the car as it moved down Elm Street. Personnel clear the firing range, and Michael Yardley takes Lee Harvey Oswald's shot. Yardley makes the shot, hitting the exact dime-sized mark. This matches what, uh, what the Connollys said, what Nellie Connolly said, and that there was matter that fell all over them. And uh, she was sitting there, and her husband's sitting here, and there's the matter. You can see it. We've got it just in front of the dash on the, um, where the windshield is. And amazingly, we even have brain matter that appears to have come on the front of the windshield. So it must have come over the top and because of the wind, it was blown back. It's just astonishing. The high-speed camera documents the dispersal of matter in all directions. A large chunk moves backward and lands on the trunk. Just like the large piece that Jackie may have been trying to retrieve. This wide spray of matter remained suspended in the air long enough for patrolman Bobby Hargis to ride through. I rode right through it. I said, what the dickens? I had stuff all over my uniform and on my motorcycle and everything. The day of the assassination, the Secret Service took the limo back to Washington, examined it, and at 1 a.m. took these two color photographs. They show the blood on the back seat. However, I haven't seen anything that counters the official story that Kennedy was shot from behind, from above. If anything, we found that if there was a shot from the grassy knoll, that shooter missed. Our results suggest that the fatal shot did not come from the grassy knoll, but rather from the sixth floor of the school book depository. But to be conclusive, we have to take two last steps. First, compare our footage to the Zapruder film, frame 313. And second, 
show our evidence to two men who know exactly what to look for. Two men who had stared into the back seat of history in 1963. Our tests have zeroed in on where the fatal shot that killed President Kennedy came from. But to finalize our conclusions, we need to take two last steps. Anytime I think about it, you can visualize what, what you saw. It's, you don't never forget it. After our physical tests, we return to Dallas and show our forensic evidence to two men who had lived through a nightmare. What they saw was seared into their memories. Now, by looking at photographs of our test results, they relive that moment when they looked inside the target car. That looks about like what it would be to me. That, that was the first thing I seen was that spot when I raised her up and I could see it on the floor. So that's a piece of the skull with the hair on it. That would show the platter about the way I seen it on the interior of the car. Well, all of this is part of it. It was very close to what actually happened out there. I mean, where the spots and stuff were. That's about as close as anybody could get it. Next, Jack McNary, the 18-year-old eyewitness. You know, you can see where it's starting to hit the seat down here and where it's dripping over. And I think that, to me, that is a great picture of what happened to send it where I remember seeing it. Yeah, there you go. I do remember all the little pieces. They went down the door and across the back. And that's what it looked like. And they would have been on the floor, down here, here. But this, you got it right here this, this, and this. I would say that is what I saw. There was one last test to do. Compare our results with the real thing, captured in Zapruder frame 313. But there is a difference between documenting an experiment and showing the death of a human being. For this reason, we've translated the graphic portions of the Zapruder film into a digital facsimile. This allows us to directly compare the data in a way that blunts the Zapruder frame's horrific impact and respects the memory of a beloved president. Here is our test footage reduced to similar data points. Here is the Zapruder footage. They match almost exactly. The same angle, matter went the same way. It fell forward. Some of it went farther forward and wound up on, on the windshield. Both eyewitnesses and historical footage reinforce our test results. The Warren Commission was correct. The fatal shot did not come from the grassy knoll. I think this test has shown quite conclusively that the shot that killed President Kennedy by striking him in the head did come from behind and apparently from the sixth floor window of the old book depository building. <laughs>